Hi everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers, and today I am going to be freezing squash. Now the squash I'm going to freeze today is summer squash. And I've got most of it already prepped because you really don't need to sit there and watch me slice a billion pieces of squash. But what I'm trying to do today is clear a bunch of this out of my fridge. It's all really good quality and I want to be able to use it during the winter. I made the comment, it's all really good quality. Freezing a vegetable that is not good quality to start with is not going to improve the quality of it. So don't say, oh, this is kind of junky, let's freeze it. This is a, computer science people used to say, garbage in, garbage out. And that's exactly what you'll get. So these were all in great shape. They didn't have any blemishes on them. They're nice and firm. And I've got three different kinds here. I have green Bennett, which is a green patty pan. I have... Y star, which is a yellow patty pan, is actually yellow and green. And then I have yellow squash. Got a cutting board, a knife. This is my water that's heating that I'm going to be blanching in. I'll bring you in close here just so you can see. Here's a little green bennet. All I'm going to do is cut off the stem end and the blossom end. And then I'm going to cut this into pieces. I've decided what size pieces I personally want, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm consistent. Now, obviously, these are not consistently shaped pieces because <laughs> uh, they're cute little guys, but they're little out, little UFOs is what they're shaped like. And I'm going to do the same. I've got all of my pieces right like that. I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow and green patty pan. Now when I get something as thick as this, a lot of times what I actually do is split it. And that's purely a personal preference regarding the size of the pieces that I'm going to be dealing with. I am going to be blanching this. Now blanching simply means cooking in boiling water, not salted water, boiling water, just plain water, for in this case three minutes. What that is going to do is that is going to stop the enzymes that are in the vegetables from making them continue to age in the freezer. Now, if I was going to be using this in the next month or two, I wouldn't bother to scald it in the water, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. But, I have no idea when I'll be using this. And in the past, when I've done it this way, the quality was as good as you're going to get from frozen squash. What I will do is I will use this in things like stir fry. Now, it is not going to be as crisp as if it just came out of the garden, obviously. But, if you just literally have all of your stir fry cooked and then toss this in at the very last minute just enough to heat it through it's pretty darn good it's excellent in soups and stews in the middle of the winter and you can either add it early on in which case it'll just basically disappear or you can add it right before you serve and just let it melt basically and uh, cook a little bit. We tend to actually like to be able to tell we have the squash in there so we use it a lot in stir fry and as a last minute addition to fresh soups and things like that. Now when I'm cutting up my yellow squash I tend, yellow squash is not as firm as the patty pan. So I'll make slightly bigger chunks 
until the squash gets about the size of a half dollar and then I'll split the squash. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I'm thinking in terms of bite-sized pieces. I don't want pieces that the person is going to actually have to cut. One of the things I've never liked is when I get pieces in my soups that are too big to get into a spoon that you really need to cut. So like when I get a piece, this is borderline, this piece here, I might just cut him in half like that. Because I want these to be comfortable sized pieces where people are not cramming stuff in their mouths. Especially if you have smaller children, you need to consider how big you're going to allow those pieces to be. And see, I decided those were just a little bit too big, so I chopped them in half. Piece of cake. I'm going to use this to scoop this stuff out once it's been in there for three minutes. I have a timer. It is set for three minutes. And I am simply going to take my green bennet and carefully pour these in. You do not want to splash yourself because it hurts when you get splashed with hot water. Start the timer. When I have a container of water that's this large, it cools it down when you dump in that squash, especially since the squash was in the fridge. But it never completely drops the temperature too far. If this was a smaller container, it would really take a long time. This, the bubbling off the bottom of this contained, continued the whole time. So I'm not worried about this not being in there long enough. Not all vegetables need to be blanched before they're frozen. Peppers is one thing that does not need to be blanched at all. It lets you be lazy. And that's cool. There's times when, especially during this time of year when you're doing lots of preserving all at once, giant ice cube, <laughs> that the last thing you feel like having to deal with is yet another thing that has to be blanched. Some people don't blanch their squash, and as I said, it's fine as long as you're going to use them really quickly. A lot of the squash, it depends on how much I wind up putting away, but I may not use this until March, April, May of next year in soups. And I want to make sure it's still as high quality as I could possibly have. I do not pre-cook. Some people do like their squash pre-cooked when they freeze it. We're trying to use it as, as, it's, as if it's a fresh product, so we do not pre-cook. It definitely gets mushy that way. It will be way less mushy this way. And we like our squash firm, to be honest. Shake as much of the water out as I can. And then this goes into the ice water. And while the reason you're doing that is you want to stop that cooking. Now this is obviously ready again. It's boiling really well. So the next batch goes in. Squash is cooling down nicely. When I finish with that squash, I am going to put it on a baking sheet. Now the reason I'm going to put it on a baking sheet is that I'm going to put it into my freezer like that. And that is going to allow me to pack this in a loose pack. That means when it's time in the middle of the winter to make soup or stew or stir fry, I can just grab out whatever I need. I don't always do that. For green beans, I do a combination. I do regular, what we call two people servings. Then I also do stir fry servings, which are about four times the normal vegetable serving. And then I also do loose packs that give me total flexibility as to how much I want to use at any given time. The 
squash is one of the more fragile things that we blanch. And that I really want to make sure it comes out super quickly because you don't want mushy squash. You don't have to have a garden in order to be able to do this. All you have to have is a source of vegetables. If you've got a neighborhood gardener who is up to his armpits or her armpits in vegetables and does not want to, oh, this is boiling again, so I always wait till it boils, does not want to freeze any squash and is trying to give you squash, you could take that squash and process it yourself. But this takes care of all of my yellow squash and my patty pan. As you can see, it's not hard. I'm simply going to take this tray and I'm going to stick it in my deep freeze. It's going to freeze and in a couple of hours I'll be able to pull this out, break up the pieces and throw them into a Ziploc bag. Super simple. Three minutes per batch for summer squash. Now, I suggest you get a ball blue book of some sort, ball book of canning. They have information on how many minutes you need to blanch different fruits or vegetables. But as you can see, it's not hard. And one of the nice things is you don't have to have huge quantities in order to be able to freeze. And you don't have to have Pretty much everybody's got a pot and a bowl, and you can always buy some ice if you don't have an ice maker. We don't have an ice maker because we have a propane refrigerator, and propane refrigerators do not come with ice makers. So we either make our own, we have some really cool silicone <laughs> trays for ice cubes, or we, if we we're going to do a big day of canning, we'll stop at the local gas station and pick up a big bag of ice before we can. just makes it easier. Super simple, worth trying, small quantities are possible, giant quantities are possible. If you're doing giant quantities, you'll just need more ice, more water, more bowls, more trays. <laughs> and you can go ahead and use a vacuum sealer to seal them down right away and all that sort of stuff. We're just choosing this time to do bulk packs so that we can throw in as many as we want to when we want to use them. So I hope you found this interesting certainly easy. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you should try freezing some veggies at your place. It's not hard. So until next time, have a great day. Bye.